Good morning. Welcome back. It's Friday Coffee Talks, where we talk over coffee on Friday. I've got my cup right here. Oh. Excellent, excellent, excellent. This is a new coffee I've just been started this week. Coffee Bros in North uh, North uh, New York. Uh, this is their espresso roast. I just ordered it online. Literally just Googled good espresso to order on the internet. And I ordered this one, and it is fantastic fantastic cannot stress enough how good this is i'm going to link to their website on my on the show notes so check out below these guys are great if you need some good espresso check out the coffee bros i held out hope for a long time that this year was going to be better and that my jackets were not going to be oh just miserable but we are um we held tough against clemson in the first game for most of the game we still ended up losing by 30, but we hung, t- hung tough for a while, and I was like, maybe we're turning a corner. And then we beat Western Carolina, and I was like, all right, this is great. Like, maybe we can win a few more than three games. Um, and then this weekend happened against Ole Miss, so. Oh, no! We suck again! Yeah, not great. My jackets are pretty terrible, but we're not going to lose faith. Uh, we're going to hope that things turn around, and... Um, Yeah, if not, uh, it may be the end of the 404 Waffle House era for Georgia Tech football. I'm really happy with Coach Collins. I like him, but he just hasn't been getting it done. So ah, we'll see what happens. It's been a painful few years. Um, I'd love to see Georgia Tech return to prominence, but it doesn't look like it's going to be anytime soon. So um, we've got a great episode today. This is one I've been working on for a while, actually. Um, I've been doing a few things in the background that I don't know if anybody even noticed. Um, one of which was when I listed my job at Piggy Joe's, uh, our children's boutique that we own, um, over here actually, um, I listed myself as co-owner and CIO and I did that for a reason. It's kind of a joke of like CIO. Um, we have one iPad and one PC. There's not a whole lot of information technology going on in there. Um, the stuff we do have is top of the line. It's very nice. Shout out to my friends that I bought it from. I'm not going to say who I did. Um, but I put CIO in my title for a reason, because I was trying to hope that people would reach out to me having CIO in my, uh, in my profile. Um, and I would get to take a look at some sales pitches and that's what today is going to be all about real world, real life sales pitches that I've gotten on LinkedIn, uh, a couple over email, and I'm going to talk about what's good, what's bad, who's doing things right who could use a little bit more coaching. So let me put the disclaimer out now. I have not bought anything from any of these people. None of these people have sent me anything. I have received no benefits. Um, every one of them has gotten the same response, which is that I'm not interested. Um, so for, you know, in the interest of full disclosure and uh, transparency and all that, uh, my opinion has not been swayed at all by anything that I've received or, or you know, whatever from these folks. I'm just trying to illustrate uh, a couple of real good examples of, maybe some good and maybe some bad. So without any further ado, let me jump right in. I'm going to show a couple screenshots of some messages I've gotten in email and LinkedIn. Um, Identities have been hidden on the ones that are, could use a little coaching just to protect them. I'm not trying to call anybody out or make anybody feel bad. Um, But I will tell you who are the ones that have sent the good ones. So you can, uh, you know, maybe, maybe reach out to them or whatever. Um, So let's go with the first one right here. So, Back in college, I was a co-op for a mechanical engineering company. Uh, it was a great job. I loved doing it. But I haven't done HVAC in quite a long time. I get these a lot. Um, I can't tell you how many people send me messages on LinkedIn asking about HVAC contracting. This guy's trying to give me some residential jobs. I mean, great. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, I'm not looking to do any residential HVAC right now. So um, this is the first tip that I've got is do a minuscule amount of research, at least, on the people you're reaching out to. Um, he says, looks like you focus on HVAC and was wondering if you have the capacity to take on more residential projects. If you had taken a look at my profile, you would know that I'm not involved in HVAC anymore, and it's the same for you. At least read the people's profile that you're sending messages to. I, I get that people are metrics sometimes on you know, how many messages they send out, all that kind of stuff. That That is a problem, first of all. And second of all, like take a little bit of time, at least research who you're sending this to, 
because if you don't know why you're sending it to them, they sure as heck don't. Um, and they're not seeing any value from the things that you're sending them if you don't know why you're even sending it to them. So that's the first one. The second one, let's see. Got to get to it. All right. This is another thing that um, that drives me crazy sometimes. So here we have a message from somebody that added me on LinkedIn. You can see the time here is 9.05 a.m. They added me. It says, hi, Connor. Congratulations on your new role as Store Magic at Store Magic. Your script is a little broken there. So that is a first red flag. Uh, but you see they added me. They're a financial advisor. This is another one I get all the time, people that are financial advisors. Um, added me 9.05 a.m. I accepted their invitation. And at 11.06 a.m., I get this message. So two hours after I, after their first message they ever sent me out of the blue. Thank you for accepting my invitation. Lately, I've been assisting clients who recently changed jobs, make a good decision as to what to do with their previous 401ks. This happened to come when I got a promotion earlier this year. And I, I guess LinkedIn told them I changed jobs. But again, if you took a look at my profile, you would know I've been at the same company for over six years. I'm not worried about what my previous 401ks are doing because I haven't moved companies. So there's two on this one. Uh, number one pet peeve of mine is do not shoot a cold sales email on LinkedIn or met or whatever. As soon as you connect with somebody, it's horribly annoying. It's never, ever going to work. It's never going to get you where you want to go. You have to build some trust with people before you have the, um, relational equity to be able to reach out and try to sell them something. So at least be connected to them for a period of time, a period of time, two hours is not enough. Don't send your first pitch email two hours after you connect with somebody. The second thing here is, um, is again, if they'd taken a look at my profile, they would know I didn't just change jobs. I have zero interest in anything related to a 401k right now. So their message doesn't match what I'm looking for. It's pretty obvious. So again, do a little bit of research. Um, I mean, th for the first message to send to somebody to have a call to action to say, can we get on a brief 15 minute call over the next two weeks? No, 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 I'm not interested. Not getting on a 15 minute call. All right, let's go to the next one. What do we have here? Okay, so those are a couple of bad examples. Um, I, I have a lot more, but as I said, I'm not really trying to call anybody out. I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. So there's a ton more in my inbox, but I couldn't, th those are the ones that I could conceivably hide who they were. The other ones have a lot of identifying information. They have very specific things about their company or why they reached out to me, um, which is better, but you know, still not great examples. So um, I couldn't make the screenshots work. There's a couple of examples of the bad stuff. Let's talk about some of the good. Um, you know, coach the bad, celebrate the good. So let's do this one. This is one that uh, it didn't get a meeting, but it made me chuckle, and um, and it maybe it would work for you. So here we go. This is a message I got. Connor, hey, if I can make you laugh, you have to meet with me about how to expand in the United States. I mean, the opener's not great. I mean, if you're if you're trying to challenge me, I think there's a better way to word that, honestly. Uh, but I love the concept. I'm going to tell you a joke. I'm going to do something innocuous. And if it pans out, you got to give me a meeting. I have great premise. That's awesome. I've I, I like the approach, but... Um, so here we go with the joke deal. Here we go. Why do they call them pirates? Cause that's what they are. Did you laugh? Uh, it's a good joke. It didn't get them a meeting, but it's a pretty good opener, pretty good, uh, like easy way to get in and, and start a discussion with somebody. It's a heck of a lot better than just throwing me up a big wall of text about why your company is so great. So, um, doing something different, they call it a pattern interrupt. It's different than what everybody else is doing. It's unique. It stands out. Props to this person. They did a great job at catching my attention. Um, it's not a perfect sales pitch, but it could it could use a little work. It's got a little room for improvement, but it's a really good start. So I like this one a lot. Um, what is the next one? Okay, so this one is a guy named Troy Hippolito. I am connected with Troy. I'm going to tag him. Uh, but Troy did a wonderful job uh, at this. So as it's pretty easy to tell, I'm a big fan of video. In my own cold reach outs on LinkedIn, I generally will use video. 
Um, Troy did have a, a link here, which I tend to stray away from just because it, uh, it seems a little less personal, a little bit more um, produced, coached. I don't know. I don't even know if that's the right word for it. But um, he did send me a video. As you can see by the purple link, I did click on it when I first received it. Um, he did wait. He waited about a week to send this to me, which is very good. I appreciate that. It didn't just try to pitch me out of the blue. And the video was not a canned video that he sends out to a bunch of people. It was personalized, which is also very, very good. Um, it was short. I was able to watch the whole thing. I think it was 30 seconds, if I remember correctly. Um, he made it for me. It had my name in it. He was specifically talking about me, what he could bring to the table as value for me as uh, whatever service he was trying to sell. And the funny thing was, the one of the things that connected me with me with me in the video is he has the same microphone that I do. Um, so I did send him a note back and said like, oh, I think it's funny. We have the same microphone. I'm not interested in what you're selling, but thanks for the video. It was a nice touch. Um, and, and in fact, his response to that was another video to thank me for responding, uh, which was well done all around. Troy, great job. You're doing, you're killing the, the cold reach out game. Um, this is awesome. There is so much power in video. If you guys are reaching out to people regularly on LinkedIn, you put your face out there. It makes such a difference. Um, I'm not going to say I've had you know, drastic wide sweeping results, but I've had a heck of a lot better results. The percentages are way higher when I send video messages to a specific person. It's something that I record just for them. I talk about things that are specific to their business, why I'm reaching out, why I think it would be a good time, good thing for us to talk. Um, and the call to action at the end is never, can I get 15 minutes on your calendar? It's my, my call to action just personally is Take a look at what I post. I'm always on LinkedIn. If you're interested in what I'm posting, give me a call and I'd love to chat with you. I think I could help. Those type of things make it easy for them to say yes. If you're asking for time on their calendar, everyone and their brother is asking for time on their calendar. Let people come to you. Let them make the decision. I'm not saying they're going to schedule time with you, but um, letting making it an easy yes is a big win. So all for video. Troy, great job. Um, great job sending the video. So... The last one I have here is a great example. This is actually an email that I got. Um, so the you see the, the subject here is lunch plus cash. That should get anybody's attention, right? Everybody loves lunch. Everybody loves cash. Uh, this is a guy named Alex McBratney. Sent me an email. Straight to the point. It's short. It's not a wall of text. He actually hasn't tried to sell me anything. He's trying to get me to a, a demo, I guess it is. Connor, $60 thank you card from Amazon.com if you join one of our upcoming GoToConnect demo sessions. The next date is in a couple of weeks. Now, he didn't put out there what he's trying to sell me or what the demo is about, so maybe a bit of a miss there, but he led with value. I'm going to get a $60 card if I join one of these demo sessions. Um, I could probably spare time to do that if I wanted a $60 card, if it was that important to me. Um, so he made it easy to say yes. Again, there's not a whole lot of stuff for me to read. I can take 10 seconds and read this entire email and get exactly what he wanted me to do, which is what I did. I read the email. I didn't skip over it. Um, I didn't schedule a demo with him, but I read it. I, he got his point across. So that's very good. Um, $60 is, is a good amount of money. I mean, that's if you're trying to pay somebody for their time to show up to your demo session, you got to make it worth it. Nobody's going to come and do a, an hour long demo on something that they don't really care about for five bucks. So $60, that's great. That, that'll turn some heads. Uh, but what Alex did next is really what sets him apart. So this next email that I got was a few days later. It wasn't that same afternoon. It wasn't uh, you know a month later, but a few days afterwards, Alex sent me this email, which he personalized it even more. So he replied to his initial email. He changed the subject to say Stormtrooper Helmet, um, took a big swing, happened to pay off for him. And then the body of the email says, I'm also... Just, hey, heads up, I made sure your gift card is enough for you to get a Lego Star Wars Stormtrooper helmet. They're super cool. My kids love these things. I thought I would mention it. Now, that is taking it to another level. It's personalizing it. That's a great, great, great touch for a, a cold email. Like, this is awesome. He took a swing. I'm a seller in an IT world. I'm a white man. And he guessed that I would love not only Lego, but Star Wars. In his case, he happened to be correct. So it came out for me. I read this email and I go, oh, oh, I wonder if I could do a demo session. Um, <laughs> I didn't. Again, let me be clear. I did not. Um, but uh, there's 
it, it more intrinsically valuable for me to earn a Lego Star Wars helmet that I can make with my son. Uh, that's a memory. He's selling me a memory and an experience, not just a $60 card now. So that is a super, super good touch. You'll notice he has not put anything in here about his company, what he's trying to sell me, what products they have. He has not pitched me at all. He's trying to get me to a demo session. And in this case, what I actually did from here is I went and looked up his website and I figured out what he did on my own. Um, he got me to spend my time researching him instead of him trying to sell me, which is exactly what you're trying to do. Um, it didn't so happen that uh, I needed his product, but if it was something that I needed and was interested in, I d went out there. I started looking into his company and I figured out what he did. And if it had fit, I would have probably done a demo uh, because he had done a great job selling me. Um, I didn't because it's... Uh, they, they weren't somebody that I needed, which is totally fine. Um, you're not going to get a hit with everybody, but Alex did a wonderful job at his reach out. So um, steal the good from these folks, maybe kind of use some of these lessons to improve on some of the not so good stuff, but uh, good luck out there. It's a tough game. It's a grind for all you sales development, business dev folks, all the way up to enterprise account managers. You should be out there prospecting too. Um, nobody's above cold email, cold reach outs. We're all trying to find new business where we can get it. Um, so I hope this helps. I hope it can uh, improve your hit rate on things. Uh, maybe maybe you get one more that you couldn't have gotten based on a couple things that I've showed you here. So if you want to practice your sales, reach out with me. I'm happy to give you feedback. I won't post you on LinkedIn. I won't post you on YouTube if you don't want me to. Um yeah, my email is all over. If you can't find it on my LinkedIn profile, that's probably says something about you too. Shoot me an email. Um, my phone number, I think, is out there too. If you want to call me and give me your cold call pitch, I'll be happy to listen to it. Um, I'm a busy guy, but I will take time out to help other people because that's why I'm here. So uh, happy to be a sounding board for you, a practice session for you. If you want to do some practice, reach out. I'm here. I'm available. I'd be happy to dedicate some time to you. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to go finish my coffee. Uh, this has been Friday Coffee Talks, episode 83. We had a little chat, a little talk over coffee, and it's Friday. I appreciate you coming out. I'll see you next week. Catch you then.